Nigeria should be Africa's powerhouse. It's Africa's largest oil producer and the sixth highest crude oil producer in the world. It's the most populous black nation with a vibrant youth population of over 120 million. Besides oil, it has some of the continent's largest mineral deposits and vast arable lands. It also has one of the world's highest economic growth rates, averaging 7.4%. However, after decades of poor governance, more than a third of its population live in abject poverty. Earlier this year, Nigeria overtook India for the title of the world's poverty capital. Nigeria is also divided along many lines, ethnic, religious, economic and political. And these tensions often boil into violence, fueling rising insecurity experienced today in parts of the country. These divides have even escalated to some regions and groups calling for a cessation. In this Roots TV exclusive, we speak on these issues with international award-winning author Jude Idada, who recently won the Nigeria LNG Prize for Literature. Talk about Nigeria as a country and our unity and our ability to stay together. You have written about kingdoms, about Nigeria's history, individual ethnicities and all of that. Now, ever since this administration came in, President Muhammad Buhari has received or his administration has received a lot of complaints from different groups. Some are even asking for cessation. So, do you think with what is going on right now and all that you have seen that Nigeria is capable of remaining as one country or do you think it's about time that Nigeria you know divided into many parts so that it's able to rule itself and achieve some of the things that different people have been clamoring for I think we can stay together I think we should stay together um, because, because first and foremost I do not think that our problem is how let me frame it better I think our problem is individual, but even if we break into fragmented parts, we're still going with those pro problems into those fragmented parts. So what we'll have is six little ni Nigerians still exhibiting the same kind of dysfunction, the same kind of problems. It, it, it doesn't stop because if we do not interrogate the truth about what our ills are, then we just take it along to wherever we go to. Because when you see, um, I live in Canada, you know, and there's a Nigerian society in Canada. The same problems we have here are, re are replicated there. So that, sh that should tell you that no matter how many parts we break into, we will, stick, we will still take those could, problems could you give with us. Can you an example of those kinds of problems that we have in Nigeria that is being replicated in those Nigerians? You know, the tribalism, the nepotism, the, the celebration of corruption, the non-questioning of, of, of wealth, as in the source of wealth, the, um, the, 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 the celebration of the ignorant, you know, and the putting down of the knowledgeable. Those things that were in there, so when I was growing up in, in the 70s, there was a time where we stood for something and it's gone. And that is the same thing in, in Canada. In Canada, the guys who are working, who have great paying jobs, who, are, who you want to be proud to associate with, they are looked down upon by the collective Nigerian community. But they want to glorify the guys who are into fraud, who are painting us bad. They want to say that that is what is in Nigeria. So that's what it means to be a Nigerian. The Nigerian, um, I see my friends in Canada or my acquaintances, they will tell me, oh, Jude, men have to move back to Nigeria. I'm like, why? Uh, Nigeria is the only place you can hammer, that you can become a millionaire overnight and no one will ask you questions. That, that's terrible. But that is what happens here. That is what is happening. We don't question. We don't interrogate. And when the person that is actually um, falling short of our value system is actually questioned. We defend it based on religion, we defend it based on tribalism and all that kind of stuff. So those, those are the questions I think we need to ask. It's not about fragmenting, it's about addressing our value system and our collective um, definition it's of self. It's interesting you brought up corruption because as a matter of fact, I don't want to put you push you so much into politics but politics is what we talk about That's a right. lot in this country cool. this administration has made it its major assignment to fight corruption however there are people who keep saying the fight of corruption or fighting corruption by this administration is basically targeting the opposition when you see this country I mean tell us what you also hear outside of the country when you hear of this administration fighting corruption do you really think it is about ending it or just lip service or just like some critics have said it's really about fighting the opposition and is it even possible to end corruption in this country well i first i believe first that of course there's corruption on two levels there's the individual corruption then is is there's the national institutionalized corruption how do we fight corruption if we don't build the framework within which um which empowers the fight because 
corruption is also addressed by the judiciary, also by the police, as it were, which are the investigative um, force, as it is, in terms of chasing corruption. I think that, first of all, we have to, we have to build a, a mansion. You have to start from the foundation. It's not about just chasing the individual. It's about strengthening the structures that will corral the individuals who are involved in corruption to that place of um, punitive justice. But also, it's about the individual in terms of you and I. Do we really, do we really, the, the, the Nigerian, do we really understand what corruption is? Do we, are we willing to fight it when it, 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 it affects us? Because we're all corrupt in our own little way. We're all corrupt across the board. So I hear stories about, oh, you know, the present administration is only chasing people who are opposed to them and this and that and that. And I tell them, I say, okay, let's forget about the top. Let's talk about the bottom, you and I. Let's address it. I'll give you a perfect story. So I'm driving in a taxi car in Lagos. Nigeria and the taxi driver is going on about how the president is corrupt how he's hiding his work just on and on and on and I tell him I say I say um, he says I have to pay cash and I say why I have cards to pay your taxi he said no 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 that if I pay him a card it's going to take a while for taxi to pay him the money but but if I pay him cash he can hold it and not share it with taxi I said but why don't you want to share don't you guys have uh, uh, an agreement formula. between he says um, well he doesn't care that once he just gets enough money on his own he's just going to leave and he wants to travel abroad and this is a man who is saying in that same breath how the president is corrupt and how the government is corrupt. And I ask him, I say, you have a contract, a social contract with the president. You voted him into power with a collective agreement on what you wanted to perform as. He said, yes. I said, you voted? He said, yes. I said, so that is the same kind of agreement, the social contract you have with Taxify, that is an expectation of self from you. You are falling short of the glory. You are doing it, but you cannot see it. Despite the dangers involved in migration and ill treatment some Nigerians receive while abroad, recent surveys by several UN-backed non-profit organizations reveal that one in three young educated Nigerian wants to leave the country for greener pastures. About eight in ten potential Nigerian immigrants are aged 35 or younger. In almost all sectors, there are more qualified Nigerians practicing outside the country than within the nation. A lot of Nigerians want to leave. I mean, talk about the taxify driver. Mm -hmm. He gave us an yes, example yes, yeah. of his own idea is mm -hmm. to get out of this country. Yeah. I mean, we are losing countless number of great minds like yours going to other countries to develop. I mean, you even see athletes who are running for other countries. They're Nigerians, mm -hmm. but are, you know, sporting other countries' uh, flags. I could ask you, what can we do to make it right? But my question is, what would attract, what would make someone stay and what would make people like you who have gotten so used to systems that work come back to this country, stay and bring your expertise that both you've had here and outside of the country to make things work here. What would make you come back? I think first of all, I'll just start by saying this. You have to leave Nigeria to discover Nigeria. You have to be separated from Nigeria to fall in love with Nigeria. Um, 2001, I wasn't this Jude. I was the same thing. I was focused on all the ills of the country. And when I left Nigeria, after a couple of years, I started seeing Nigeria differently. I started understanding what I was strength. Of course, I was still aware of our weaknesses, but I started seeing our strengths. I started seeing things that we have that we take for granted. Example? Um, the collective, the sense of collective self that even, even, even though it's deteriorating, we still have this thing about family. the walls between us, the family, that thing of the collegial system. Yeah. It's something that you cannot, you don't, you, you cannot even, you don't, there's no money value to it. Because I live in Canada, I know how cold and how separate and how individual it is, where people die in their apartments and nobody knows, even their family, to show that means your, your, you, you have parents who haven't spoken to their kids in years and they're in the same city. It can't happen here. You know, the way we take care of ourselves, where all this omogu, all those little, little things, Mm -hmm. that and those are things that that's why I say that there's so much that can bind us together rather than separating us but in, in the, your question about what will bring us back I think the thing that would bring Nigerians back is the law because that's what keeps us there the law because the law what it does is that it, it equalizes and it protects you know where you know that you can seek redress where you know that there's something that is how like it is is um, curtailing your your actions as it concerns 
you and the other individual and you and the authorities as it were but we don't have it here so the, the my my siblings are all abroad i just have two here in nigeria and that's the first thing they ask me so do, how, how do you suffer and um, survive there what if someone does this to you how can you are you guaranteed protection are you guaranteed this are you because just that's what we have that's the difference because let me tell you something when you go to lagos you see the white people in lagos they expatriates mm. they are now as dysfunctional as we are True. because of there's no law True. so the thing that made them act civilized is no longer there. So they are here and they are driving one way. I see a white man driving one way, and I will over with them like, what? He, he, he has no fear, but he knows he cannot do it there. So I think that is the one thing that if we are guaranteed, and the law also has to be expressive. It has to show example. While Nigeria is plagued with a myriad of problems, the popular proverb, Rome was not built in a day, is quoted by many proponents of our nationhood. Though at 59, many had expected Nigeria to have outgrown its many challenges. But the real question is, will breaking up truly solve Nigeria's problems? Roots TV, Nigeria.